Uh, I will give you like several tips or so on traveling that I have used over the years. I've been traveling since I was 13 years old on my own without a passport and with a passport. So I think I am. Without a passport? What does that mean? Like you're jumping borders and shit? Yeah, we did that. I did that a little bit too. We we, <laughs> we can exchange stories. <laughs> so, I was 13 years old. As usual, living with some, uh, I don't know, but this time, you know, my brain is fully developed. I'm starting to gain my independence. You think your, your brain is fully developed? Not fully developed. I mean, like, I was starting to, you know, understand that I can do things on my own at that age. Okay. Instead of, uh, you know, I was not, like, relying, co-depending on people anymore. Because mm. I was walking, you know, and I was handing some peanuts or something like this. And my mom was seriously sick at that time. And they had to transfer us to Ghana. And I was just 13, living with someone, my brother, and all of this. And then I decided one day, like, I'm done with all of this bullshit. And I'm going to go meet my mom. And at this time, I had no passport, <laughs> no ticket, nothing. I was just, like, asking people, so if I want to go to this country, how do I do it? And they tell me. And then I'm like, okay. And I also had no phone. Oh, my God. It's Nigeria. I imagine someone 13 years old at that time phones like in my status. It was impossible. Yeah. So anyway, I asked people around like this, so they was not they were not aware of exactly what I was gonna do or why I was asking these questions. But I was just like finding out exactly how to get there. Yeah. One day I just took one bag, and then I went from um, Badagri. If you are familiar with Nigeria. From Badagri to Seme, mm. you know, Kotonu Bada. Is that where Boko Haram is? No. Okay, go ahead. It's, not a place. it's like the border to Kotonu, Bini Republic. So I went to Bini Republic and I was like very tiny and little. Mm. And you know, during those times, the border people there, there were really big women that were hawking across the border so like, you can just pass. Mm. And there were also kids following them. Mm. So like, I guess like the immigration thought I was one of the kids yep. because of course I'm black and the countries are like black citizens. Like, so that was how I did it. I just took my bag and left. Wow. When I got to Ghana, I got there at like maybe 1 a.m. in the middle of the night. Mm. And then I went to Ikea's. I called my mom and she's like, okay, this is a prank call. <laughs> How did you get here? Good. Well, it jumped the border. She literally came there without sleepers. That was how scared she was. Like, what the hell is wrong with you? Mm. But then, I don't know if I regret that decision or not because I gained the, the type of independence that I was not, I didn't need at that time. Mm. Because she was like, okay, if I could do this, I could save up money by myself. Yeah. I could successfully travel three borders. There are three borders from Nigeria to Ghana. And I don't have a phone. I could find her on my phone. Yeah. Then like, you know, in our brain, I don't know what about her. She's like, okay, I'm not trying off. And some certain things I wished I was like disciplined for. I wasn't. I was just allowed to make choices by myself because of that decision. So... I'm not sure if I liked it or not, because it's affected me in some ways. Mm. That's wild. It seems like you had a wild childhood. Yeah. Not the average. No, I yeah. have life. That's why you don't have a, the, an average life too, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like you you pay the price to be the boss in one way or another. You know? Something like that, maybe. So my other tip is if you're traveling on a budget and you didn't have enough money... And this happened to me before. You know, I was in Ghana. I was handing less than 2K yeah. USD. And even though it was like a lot at that time, still I would not just crazily go book hotels, even though I wanted to travel. And then I came across this uh, app called Couchsurfing. Mm. And since then, I used Couchsurfing to tour like a lot of African countries without paying a dime. And it was not uh, dangerous, you know, it was safe because the people there have been verified with their passports, they hide everything. And when you accept a host or like you are set to be a guest, yeah. 
they have this information that you are going to be here in this address at this time. Yeah. So I use this a lot when I was traveling and struggling. And I think it's still like a thing right now. And if you want to travel, you enjoy traveling like me and you don't have enough budget for accommodation or you really want to meet the lower kind. Well, so what you're talking about is couch surfing, right? So this is an app that allows people to connect travelers and locals. If you're the type of person who don't like to travel, like a tourist, like, you know, the worst people, people who don't know how to travel are typically um, uh, Americans and Europeans. Well, Americans, um, Europeans are a little bit better. Americans are much worse. They just travel like you, even, I mean, Europeans also are in this category. The way they travel, they have only two weeks holiday a year. And then they plan the whole trip, especially Germans. They plan their trip like five years ahead of time. And they know that, oh, I'm going to be here and I'll go here and I'll go there. And they just go every city and they do all this touristic shit. And then they leave. And you don't really get to learn anything. It's changing. You don't get to learn something genuine about the local, the place that you're visiting, the culture, the people. Because all you do, you go through hotels or lodges and then it's done. Okay, so on my Instagram, I say I asked people this yep. question. Do you know the difference between a traveler and a vacationer? Mm-hmm. So let me finish the couch surfing thing. So couch surfing is people who, when I was broke in, in Cape Town, the only way I could meet people who are from elsewhere, couch surfing was one of those things. It means that I had an apartment And I could host people who are traveling into Cape Town, South Africa, and they don't have as much money or they have, but they just want to connect with locals. So they would stay with me. Some people would stay with me for a month, right? Wow. And I I made real friends during that time that are still friends of mine now, today, in in Europe. I have a lot of friends that are from couch. Exactly right. So it's a good way to connect people who are curious about the world and travel. And yeah, it's almost like... It's also a good way to assist people. Like, hosting people. I don't think the assist part is... I don't like it because there are certain people who use couch surfing for the wrong reason. Yeah, that's true. So, couch surfing is supposed to be a travel app, but it also works as a hookup app for some people, right? It's like travelers who are broke or who are just like uh, horny and they want to ban locals, they use the app to do that. You know, like, this thing you just said... I think it was corrupted in Dubai. I don't know why they brought it to Dubai, but before, like in 2016. Right. So, hey, listen, if you enjoyed this small piece of a long form podcast interview that I just did, I recommend that you go to Survival Skills Podcast and watch the entire interviews without any delays or without ads and destruction. The podcast name is Survival Skills Podcast. It's available on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, and all other platforms. Search it, find it, go there and subscribe and enjoy the entire, entire episode, okay? Have fun. Peace.